Okay, is this thing on? Hey everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. Brand new year, 2021, welcome. Brand new camera, brand new remote. Hopefully I'm looking a little bit clearer. But I was working with some code this morning and I ran into an interesting wrinkle when extracting a view from a view controller. Normally this is a pretty straightforward process, but one of the things that can get a little bit tricky is dealing with the interactions between a view and a view controller. How do you send messages back up from one to the other? If you've ever had to wrestle with this, come on in and I'm gonna show you a really nice, elegant way for helping keep your views and view controller separated while maintaining that super important interaction and keeping your app lean and mean. Okay, so here's the app that I want to extract the view from the view controller in. This is our Weatherly app. If you haven't seen it, do check out the show notes. I've got a book in there that explains to you how to build this with all the latest and greatest iOS affordances. But basically what I've got right now is a giant view controller that has my view. It has all the interactions between the search bar and the location bar. For example, I can come in here and check out the weather in Hong Kong and hit return or I can hit my location and it will use the core location manager to figure out that I'm in San Francisco for the simulator here and update the view accordingly. Now the challenge with extracting this view is basically dealing with the interactions between the view controller and the view, the elements on the screen here. What I mean by that is when someone touches this button, that's gonna interact with views that I want to extract and that's kind of a challenge. So how can I extract the view from this view controller yet maintain that communication between the view and the view controllers and handle all the interactions? Well, for step one, let me show you what it's like just to extract the view, because that's relatively straightforward. I've created a brand new class here called the weather view, and it's just a UI view. I've taken all the code from the view controller and extracted it in here. So in here I've extracted my stack view, which contains my search bar, my weather, the background image. I've pulled all of that into this weather view here. And then I simply do my styling, my layout. I'm doing auto layout here. This is just pure code extraction. And then when I go to present this back in the view controller, here's something you may not be aware of. There's actually two ways you can do this. One, is I can just create a brand new weather view, which contains all of the elements in that view that I've extracted. I'm just gonna instantiate that in my view controller. And then when I go to present it, I can do it in one of two ways. One, I can just set the view to the view of the view controller, which is great. This is simple, this is a one line. This is gonna be a full screen takeover, taking the view of I've extracted and just stretching it out into the entire view controller, or, I could do it with good old auto layout. So of course I'm doing everything with auto layout when I'm laying all this stuff out here. But when it comes to presenting sub views and view controllers, if you want the full screen takeover, you can do it like this. But if I had multiple views I was uh, extracting and I needed them to be laid out relative to each other, I can still do that with good old auto layout. And in this case, I just want the view to go to all four edges fully. I can pin those to the four edges using the auto layout and I could do it that way. So just one of two ways to extract the view and present it in your view controller. Okay, so extracting views the easy part. The hard part is dealing with the interactions between the view and the view controller. Let me show you what I mean. Here in the view controller, I've got a UI text field delegate which handles all the calls that occur when someone types in here and looks for the weather in a city. These are the functions that gets called. When someone hits enter here, text field did and editing is gonna get called. Because I've extracted this view, I really need to figure out how am I gonna deal with this between my view and my view controller. And in this case, what I decided to do is because this text field now lives in my sub view, I really wanna have all of this code occur and happen in my sub view. So in view controller, I'm just gonna copy over the same delegate code that I originally had in my view controller. So it's all gonna be handled here in the extracted view. The challenge is how do I communicate back to that view controller? I mean, it's great that I'll know when that thing fires here, but how do I communicate back? Well, here's the trick to doing that. What you can do is basically create a closure 
and have the view controller pass it in and have it fire when this event occurs. Let me show you what I mean. So basically we've extracted a view from the view controller, but we need a way of communicating back. We can simply do that with a closure. We can create a variable in our view, some kind of handler, have the view controller pass it a closure or a function that we want to execute when that handler occurs. And then when someone types in the text field and we get that event, like, hey, someone's finished typing a city, we can then fire that callback, have the view controller execute, and then let it decide what it wants to do based on that event occurring. In code, it looks like this. We can go into our weather view, define a search text field handler, and just define it as a closure here. And if this looks really foreign to you, don't be intimidated. Closures can be a little bit scary when you first get into them, but basically think of a closure as having a type, and all we're doing here is defining a type. We're basically saying the input is gonna be a UI text field, and it's gonna return an output of void. That's the method signature. Now I've just put all of that in quotes here because I want that to be optional. In other words, I'm not requiring that you have that thing created when you actually create your view. Then what we can do is later on when someone actually does type in a city, we can check to see if we have a closure or a handler register. And if we do, we can just execute that code. This is how we execute a closure in Swift. We just take it, we execute it, we pass it whatever its input fields are, in this case, the UI text field that was passed in, and that code will just get called. Now, how did that code get into the view? Well, we have to register it in our view controller. So as a part of our setup, we can take our weather view and basically set a function or chunk of code to the search variable field handler, which we defined here. In this case, I've created a function called fetch weather, which takes as an input the text field, it returns nothing, that's the void. And basically this code or this function will get executed now when that occurs. So that's a really nice, elegant way of basically having the view communicate back to our view controller. We can just pass it functions and have these things happen. Well, there you have it. That's just one of the challenges we face when extracting views from view controllers, but we can absolutely do it. We can communicate back via closures. We could have also done it with a protocol delegate. But what I really recommend is just taking a simple project Try extracting a view, see what problems you run into, and then drop me a comment below and I'm happy to help you out and just explain to you how I approach these things when it comes to extracting views. And hopefully that'll help you out too. It's a super important skill to have. It's really gonna keep your view controllers lean and mean, and it's something that just gets easier with practice. So don't be afraid of closures, go ahead and try them out. And uh, hopefully you'll get some nice lean code in there, which will make your apps way easier to maintain. Okay, thanks so much for coming, everyone. Happy New Year, happy 2021. Uh, do hit subscribe, do hit like, and do come back, and we'll continue some journeys in Swift in the arcade. Okay, take care, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.